My coffee's terrible. In today's video, I'm gonna be cutting off my fingers. Wait, that isn't right. In this video, I'm gonna be cutting some wood and building a bench. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's correct. My wife needs a spot in our office to put her to-go items, like her purse, her wallet, her water bottle, whatever she needs to go. So in today's video, I'm gonna be building a waterfall style bench using miter cuts and splines. For materials, I've got this 5-4 piece of poplar. It's eight feet long. It's about 12 inches wide. It's the first time I've gotten some wood at a local hardwood supplier, and it's a good deal better than the wood I used to be using, which was construction grade from Home Depot. At about 50 bucks, this was obviously a little bit more expensive than most of the wood that I've been using. However, the quality is a lot higher. It is rough cut, so we're gonna be doing some milling and planing to this before we get onto the miter cuts and then the splint splining, splining. But as the old saying goes, garbage in, garbage out. So if you start with bad wood, you're gonna have a bad end product. In this case, I'm hoping that the quality of this wood will heighten the quality of the end product. I'm gonna put this down now, it's really heavy. For the design of this bench, I'm going fairly simple. I'm gonna have 45 degree miter cuts that run the length of each corner and internal splines that add some strength and rigidity to the structure. While this bench isn't primarily going to be used for sitting, I wanna make sure that it's strong enough for somebody to do so. This will be the first time I've done any kind of waterfall cuts, so this is definitely a new technique for me, and I also haven't done any splining, so I have a lot of learning to do in this video. But these are really important techniques that any woodworker should know, so it's high time I learn. That's the design, let's cut to it. The first step in this build was to cut the board to size. So doing this, I first took measurements and then I cut the legs from the outer edge and then the center of the board was going to be the top of the bench. Seeing as this is going to be a waterfall bench table thing, I wanted to make sure I had a few extra inches on either side to work with for the milling process and cutting straight edges. After the boards were cut, I glued them down to a planer sled. I don't have a jointer. So in order to mill this first, I made some marks with a pencil and then using sh some shims that I cut, I just tried to basically eliminate any wobble in the board so that when it goes through the planer, it has a reference board to make it as flat as possible. Then once those shims are in, I hot glued everything down, mostly just hot gluing the edges, just to make sure it's secure going through the planer. My goal taking the wood through the planer is to take about a 16th of an inch off with each pass. The board started about an inch and a quarter, which gives me about a quarter inch of material to work with in order to make this nice and square and flat. I also was trying to avoid getting any snipe in the board, which happens when the blades grab the board at an angle as it's coming in, if you don't have wings like I don't. But I did end up having a little bit of that. <laughs> it worked. Look at how level this is. Once the top was sufficiently flat and all of the traces of the pencil marks were gone, I then flipped it over to the now flat surface and then using that, I began to plane the other side, working my way closer and closer to an inch in thickness, about a sixteenth of an inch at a time, all the while trying as much as I can to avoid getting any snipe in the board. So I'm not gonna lie, this is actually a really big moment for me. I was able to successfully mill this down to a really nice finish. What this means is that I can actually mill wood and I can get stuff flat and usable. This is pretty exciting. I'll just go ahead and fast forward through this as much as possible. This obviously took a long while. And while I was working my jerry-rigged, duct-taped shop vac solution for dust collection, continued to break more and more until eventually I could not keep the hose on there with the amount of dust and chips that were coming out of there. So eventually it did just pop off and I was just spewing sawdust and wood chips into my driveway and all over my garage. But as you can see, eventually this leg also was totally flat and level and I was able to move on to the longest piece, which is gonna be the bench top surface. 
Now, this one being very long, I probably experienced the most amount of snipe on it. I will need to build some wings, probably out of MDF or particle board for this planer. That way, when you're putting long boards through it, you don't need to worry so much about the board sagging and then causing snipe when the blade eventually grabs it. With this final board done, I was able to get to the unfun task of using a snow shovel to actually scrape up all of these wood chips and sawdust. Obviously, I need a better dust collection solution for this, so in another video, I'll probably be doing some 3D printing of parts for that. And now, a quick word from our sponsors. I'm just kidding. I don't have any sponsors. Just wanted a quick break. So that went really well, I think. I can tell that it's not like 100% straight and there's still a tiny little bit of bend here and there, but it's so much better than it was and it's totally usable. You'd have to get out a straight edge to even notice. This means that I can now mill my own wood down to square and flat edge, which is of course gonna be the next step, which is to get a straight edge on these so they're nice and square and flat. So let's go. This process was actually really, really simple. I just screwed down the boards onto those sleds that I had just used in the planer. These were actually the bottom part of an IKEA table that we bought and refinished, and we didn't want the bottom shelving. But they do have perfectly straight edges, so using that as a reference point with the table saw, I was able to then get a perfectly straight edge and then flip it around and cut the other side. And I just went ahead and did these for all of the boards. Really, really easy process. And if you give yourself a little bit of extra room on the edge when you're cutting your boards to length, that will let you have that wiggle room that you need in order to screw down your boards and not need any clamping or anything, which is really handy. Splinter, booty sauce, ow. All right, the boards now have flat tops, bottoms, and edges. So now I'm gonna take them over to the miter saw and cut them to correct length. I'm very encouraged by this table saw because this piece of wood is absurdly bendy and thin and it didn't break. So that speaks highly of the wood, I think, and the table saw. So yeah, huzzah. This final process of milling the wood was actually really simple. I just set up a little bit of an extended fence on the miter saw and then a stop lock as well. I trimmed off the edges where the screw holes were, I measured them to length, and then I cut them to size. For the legs, obviously, precision in this section is really important. However, for the top of the bench, it really doesn't matter. It's going to be as long as it is, so I more or less just trimmed off the edges where the screw holes had been and called it a day. So obviously I didn't need that extended fence or a stop block. There we go. My first ever S4S milled lumber. It is near perfect. You'd really have to look closely to see any kind of warping or defects in the wood, and it is totally workable. That means I've now added the skill of milling down my own wood and making sure it is flat and square. I'm pretty excited about it, to be honest with you. <laughs> it definitely opens up the door to so much in the woodworking world, and I feel like now I can kind of say that I am a woodworker because I have worked with some wood. Also shout out to my buddy Trent, who has been super, super helpful all along this process of learning and improving with my milling and general craftsmanship here. <laughs> I'm actually just gonna take a minute here and uh, enjoy how wonderfully straight and level and perfect this wood is. To be honest, I'm having a hard time believing that I got here from what I grabbed at the lumber mill. All right, that's enough of that. On to the next stage is going to be cutting these at miter angles on the table saw 
and then cutting grooves for the splines, all of which is stuff I've never done before. So we're gonna see how it goes. So after doing a quick dry assembly and then marking out where my miter cuts are gonna be so that I can make this into a waterfall table, I then set up a sacrificial crosscut fence and then I moved my table saw fence right in line with that fence and then I rotated the table saw blade to 45 degrees. After a couple of tests, I was satisfied enough to do it with my actual boards, as you can see here. This section was definitely cool. probably the most sketchy of anything that I did for this build. I would have loved to have a crosscut sled or a workbench with an inlay for the table saw itself so that it would support the boards more. So those are things that I'll probably want to build going forward. But it did work for this build and after sanding down the edges, it looked pretty good. Look at that. That looks like a miter joint to me. Now with the miter joints cut, the next step was to cut the spline holes. And to do this, I really just lay the boards up against the fence of the table saw there. And then I just adjusted the height until I was taking the amount of material away that I wanted in order to fit the spline through those miter cuts. I tried really hard here to push the boards up against the fence to get as straight and accurate of a cut as possible. This is another instance where it would have been really nice to have a table saw crosscut sled. However, I haven't built one yet, so that's definitely going to be something that I look forward to building in the future. With all of the miter angles cut and the spline holes cut as well, I decided to do a quick dry assembly on the floor here just to see how it looks, and things lined up fairly accurately. I then moved on to cutting the splines themselves, which basically involves cutting a board of the same height as the width of your spline in half. And then you take the two of those pieces again, and you run them through the table saw together, but you only push one of them all the way through so that you're left with a small groove of the width of your blade. Then you set your wood up against that inlay and then run it through again, again, not all the way through. And then after Perfect. taking the splinter out of your finger, go ahead and break that spline off and then see if it fits in your spline hole, which in this case, it did. I then moved on to my second spline and this one ended up not fitting quite as well into the hole, so I had to sand it down a good amount. But after a little bit of sanding and tender love and care, it too fit pretty well into the hole. For the glue up process, I don't have any 90 degree clamps. And so I just built this little jig, which is basically a couple of boards in a 90 degree angle, screwed them together. And then using my carpentry triangle, I fit the boards together. I put the triangle on the inside, my little jig on the outside, and then I clamped it all together. It is not the best solution that I think exists. Obviously, I think four 90 degree angle clamps would have been better. However, it did seem to hold it fairly true and it seems to be a good enough joint for what I'm doing here. All right, this has been drying for 45 minutes or so. Time to take off the supports and see if it'll support its own weight. It's clearly got a little bit of wobble, but I'm actually fairly happy with how the joints came out. There's definitely some pretty serious gappage going on in the miter cuts here and a little bit over here as well. I'll probably try to fill those in maybe with some sawdust and glue like I've seen on the internet. After I cut off the ends of these splines using my pole saw, 
I then went ahead and tried this trick where you basically take the really fine parts of the sawdust of the wood that you just used, you mix it with wood glue, and then you try to fill in your miter gaps. It was extremely messy. It got everywhere. It stuck to my fingers like crazy, but it did work with decent results, I would say. However, in the sanding process, a lot of that does tend to come out. So it ended up being sort of a stopgap solution. I had to use some wood filler as well. In the future, I probably would just default to wood filler at first, if I can find wood filler of the same color as the wood that I'm using. To be honest, I'm so pleased with how this came out that it hurts a little bit to stain it, but this color really wouldn't work in my wife's office. So I'm gonna stain it using this Watco Danish oil. It is a dark walnut color. I'm hoping it's gonna be a bit nicer than the Verithane wood stain that I've used in the past, and hopefully let the natural wood stain shine through a little bit better. However, it does look really pretty right now, but we're gonna be doing lots of projects and we're gonna try out all sorts of waxes and stains and finishes. So if this hurts you like it hurts me, don't worry, in the future we're gonna try all sorts of things. Now, this is poplar, and a lot of people online are saying they just paint this, they don't stain it, but we're gonna stain it. If you have ideas or a special finish or whatever it is that you like, feel free to drop a comment and let me know what that is. All right, there it is. I think overall, I like how it looks. It does a little bit better of a job of letting the natural wood grain show through than something like the Verithane wood stain. As far as ease of application, it's a little tricky to get an even coat. You have to not overwhelm it in one spot. I do like how it looks, especially on the end grain of the splines. That was really satisfying to stain over. I did notice a couple of spots where there was a little bit of wood glue or filler that I had missed and didn't stand down enough. I only went down to 120 grit. So going down to 220 grit in the future probably will help with that. But we'll let this go ahead and dry, then wipe off the excess oil if there is any at that point, and then go ahead and take a look and see it in the space. Well, there it is. It's bench. I'm actually so stoked about this build. I unlocked some major achievements and it feels like I have new skills that I can work with. If you made it to the end of the video here, thank you so much for watching. If you didn't make it to the end of the video here, thank you for watching, but you'll never know. I had a really fun time building this. It was really hard for me, but this was really fun. Also unrelated, anybody know if you can get high off Danish oil in an enclosed environment with poor ventilation? Because I think the answer is maybe. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, feel free to hit the subscribe button. There should be a, a button somewhere. I don't know where it is. Go find it. If you really enjoyed this build and any of my antics and or tomfoolery, consider hitting the like button. It does help the channel out a lot. I am growing at a ferocious pace. We're already up to like 87 subscribers. That's crazy. You guys are wild. Hey, from the future. So last night when I was filming this video, we had 87 subscribers. And then this morning I woke up to 125 subscribers. That is crazy. I was totally blown away this morning when I went to look at it. Thank you so much for your support of this channel. I am honestly blown away by all the support, all the likes, the comments, and of course the subscriptions. I literally can't do this without you. So I'm so grateful that so many of you are enjoying the content. I will be doing a 100 subscriber giveaway. So stay tuned for more information on that in the next couple of weeks. But for now, back to the video. Thank you again so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making this bench. I'm really excited for what it means for the future. I'll see you all in the next one.